This is the staggeringly impressive natural marvel known as Cheddar Gorge. Today the site is home to some very inquisitive goats and a quaint little village selling locally produced cheeses and cider, as one might expect from a place called Cheddar that is in the cider-obsessed county of Somerset. But, as a new study has revealed, this breathtaking location has an extremely dark past, involving some of the earliest inhabitants of Britain and cannibalistic ritual practices in huge cave complexes. The oldest ever DNA obtained in the UK revealed some fascinating and downright horrifying insights into Paleolithic life here. The research highlighted two distinct populations who recolonised what is now Britain following the Ice Age. Genetic data was obtained from Paleolithic humans in the UK from the ancient sites of Goffs Cave in Cheddar, Somerset and Kendrick's Cave in North Wales. It revealed the two populations moved into Britain at the end of the last Ice Age, around 13,500 years ago. It was revealed that the two groups were entirely culturally distinct in their ritual practices, treatment of the dead and, as we shall see, their diets. Not wanting to continue to bury the lead here, one group were likely involved in chilling ritual cannibalism and the others ate fish, but more on that later. A group of scientists from the Natural History Museum, University College London and the Francis Crick Institute obtained the DNA from the individuals that lived more than 13,500 years ago. Alongside other new evidence on their diet and culture, their genetic and cultural diversity paints a more complex picture of the humans that recolonised Britain at the end of the last ice age. Around two-thirds of Britain was covered by glaciers during the Ice Age, and about 17,000 years ago, as the climate warmed and the glaciers were melting, drastic ecological and environmental changes took place and humans began to return to the previously uninhabitable land in northern Europe. For the first time, the study revealed the recolonisation of Britain consisted of at least two groups with distinct origins. The first group seem to have been the same people who created the Magdalenian stone tools, a culture known also for iconic cave art and bone artefacts, and were also the first group to expand into northwest Europe around 16,000 years ago. The second group seemingly arrived around 2,000 years later and are generally referred to as Western hunter-gatherers. Their origins are thought to have been in the Near East. Britain, lying as it does at the extreme northwest corner of the continent, was the end of the line for these human migrations. Dr Selina Brace, a principal researcher on the study, said, We really wanted to find out more about who these early populations in Britain might have been. We knew from our previous work, including the study of Cheddar Man, that Western hunter-gatherers were in Britain by around 10,500 years before the present, but we didn't know when they first arrived in Britain and whether this was the only population that was present. The period we were interested in, from 20,000 to 10,000 years ago, is part of the Paleolithic, the Old Stone Age. It's interesting to note that Cheddar Man himself is thought to have experienced a violent end. He also had a large crater-like lesion above the skull's right orbit, indicating that he may have been suffering from a bone infection. Dr Sophie Charlton, lecturer in bioarchaeology at the University of York, said, This is an important time period for the environment in Britain, as there would have been significant climate warming, increases in the amount of forest and changes in the type of animals available to hunt. She added, There are very few human remains of this age in Britain, perhaps around a dozen individuals from six sites. One of these was Goff's Cave near the dramatic Cheddar Gorge in Somerset and the other was Kendrick's Cave in North Wales. Professor Ian Barnes, another member of the study group, said The individual from Goff's Cave died around 15,000 years ago and her DNA indicates that her ancestors were part of the initial migration into northwest Europe. On the other hand, the individual from Kendrick's Cave is from a later period, around 13,500 years ago, and his ancestry is from the Western Hunter-Gatherer group. The study, called Dual Ancestries and Ecologies of the Late Paleolithic in Britain, which was published in the journal Nature, Ecology and Evolution, concluded that the two populations were not just genetically different but culturally distinct too. Dr Rhiannon Stevens, Associate Professor of Archaeological Science at UCL Institute of Archaeology, said, Chemical analyses of the bones showed that the individuals from Kendrick's cave ate a lot of marine and freshwater foods, including large marine mammals. Humans at Goff's cave, however, showed no evidence of eating marine and freshwater foods and primarily ate terrestrial herbivores such as red deer, bovids such as wild cattle called aurochs and horses. The two societies' mortuary practices also differed. 
there were no animal bones showing evidence of being eaten by humans found at Kendrick's cave, indicating that the cave was used as a burial site by its occupiers. Animal bones that were discovered included portable art items such as decorated horse mandible. In contrast, and troublingly, animal and human bones found at the Cheddar Gorge location showed significant human modification, including human skulls that had been modified into skull cups. This led the team to believe these were used in ancient cannibalistic rituals. Referring to the Goffs Cave finds, part of the paper read, as well as the Mesolithic dated Cheddar Man skeleton, the remains of at least six late Paleolithic human individuals, a child, two adolescents and three adults, have been recovered from the site, two of which have previously been directly radiocarbon dated. The skeletal remains have been shown to exhibit considerable humanly induced modification that can be attributed to cannibalistic practices and the production of skull cups. The paper added, The Goff's Cave human skeletal assemblage shows no evidence for marine or freshwater resource consumption and instead diet was based primarily on terrestrial herbivores, specifically red deer and bovids, but also horses. However, this assumes that the cannibalised individuals were also those consuming the faunal remains recovered from the site. The paper noted that evidence of cannibalism at Goff's Cave was also discovered at other Magdalenian sites, such as Brillenholer and Holerfels in Germany, and Mazitska Cave in Poland. This was not the case at Kendrick's Cave, which is believed to have functioned as a tomb, but exhibited no evidence of cannibalism. The paper read, The two sites, although chronologically close, show differences in funerary behaviour. Kendrick's cave has typically been interpreted as a burial site, in part due to the lack of faunal remains, indicating food processing activities or refuse at the site. There is also no evidence of human modification on the Kendrick's cave human remains. The paper concluded, We demonstrate that the Goffs Cave and Kendrick's Cave individuals, despite being close in date, differ not only in their genetic ancestry profiles, but also in their mortuary practices and their diets, as evidenced through stable isotopic analyses. This presents a picture of a dynamic and varied late glacial period within Britain, with changes occurring in the late Upper Paleolithic in diet, funerary behaviours, technologies and genetic affinity at a time of rapid environmental and ecological change. With the addition of our data to the existing knowledge of early prehistoric genetics in Britain, the emerging scenario is one of multiple genetic population turnover events in the United Kingdom. This can be seen to reflect a dynamic, changing population throughout British early prehistoric history and which mirrors the events seen across continental Europe. The lack of human remains from late Pleistocene Britain, combined with DNA preservational limits, means analyses of the period will always be limited. We demonstrate here, however, that it is possible to obtain useful genetic information from late glacial human skeletal material in Britain, and that these data can further our understandings of early occupation of the British Isles, population movement, interactions with the continental Europe, and potential population replacements. Despite the evidence of the two populations, it is not known for certain how they made their way to Britain. During this period, Britain was still connected via Doggerland to the main European continent, but despite this, the late glacial Channel River was probably difficult to cross at its more southwesterly points, such as from the Paris Basin, and it's suggested to have created seasonal barriers to movement. Instead, it has been proposed that the populations arriving in Britain during the late glacial may have taken a more easterly route between the Channel River and the Paleo Elbe catchment, possibly across an area of higher ground linking Britain with what is now Belgium and the Netherlands. However they arrived, the evidence of how they lived makes for a fascinating, if disturbing, story. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description. Thanks for watching.